Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. I'm Michael Bryant. Happy Friday. Wait a minute. I don't think I can say that. I think uh, I think Catherine Lazardo is on today and she's copyrighted that. So I will say, hey, welcome to a great Friday. Great Friday because, yes, Good Friday has been taken. Thanks for being with us. As usual, all the latest in trial news for you today, including an important update on the Scott Peterson murder case. Yeah, uh, set the way back machine, Mr. Peabody, because we're going back to 2002, the murders of Lacey and Connor. That's coming up, and you do not want to miss this update. Stay tuned for that. We are also going to bring you an update on the defense case kicking off in that trial for the Florida man, Franklin Tucker, who just happens to be representing himself in a robbery trial that turned deadly. But first, heading out to Connecticut. This is the missing mom murder trial against the Michelle Tricona. She's accused of helping her boyfriend murder his estranged wife. This happened in 2019, say the prosecutors. Traconis is charged with conspiracy to commit murder, tampering with physical evidence, hindering the prosecution in the murder of this mother of five, Jennifer Dulos. Her body has never been found. Dulos was reported missing back in May 2019. She dropped her kids off at school that morning, five kids. Uh, police found her vehicle abandoned near a park. The lights were on, battery dead. The car's transmission in reverse. That's odd. Investigators believe Jennifer's estranged husband, Fotis Dulos, went to her home after she dropped off the kids, basically lying in wait, and killed her, and then cleaned up the scene. He then died by suicide while he was awaiting murder and kidnapping charges himself. Uh, Fotos was living with the defendant, Michelle Traconis, at the time of Jennifer's disappearance. And investigators say surveillance video shows Fotos and Traconis driving around dumping trash bags that were found to contain Jennifer's DNA. So that's how this case is rolling on. We're in week two now. Prior to the DNA analyst taking the stand uh, on Friday, the court, off to a bit of a slow start, they've had some major issues with this jury. There are only six in the box. Then there were supposed to be six alternates. When I was there for two days, I never saw more than five. One of those was dismissed for talking to the defense attorney saying, we love you. Uh, I'm sorry, the prosecution saying we love you. Or was it the defense? Anyway, it was inappropriate, and that person was kicked off. That put them down to four. Well, we got another issue. The judge received a note from the jury box. Check this out. Of course, there has been no election of a four-person. So this note that the court received is not dated. It is not signed. It was handed to the court by the marshal moments ago. It reads, one of the jurors discussed something about the case. And it was all over social media. Said it was like Gone Girl. A brief mention, several other jurors said, don't discuss this. And have this marked as a court exhibit. Now, the court did not read the name of the juror, which is on that note. What the court is going to have to do first is find out who wrote the note. Your Honor, I apologize, Ms. May. Should Ms. Maydell be excused for this? Yes. The court will then question the author of the note. And also inquire as to other matters concerning the note. The note does not indicate when these matters were discussed. That is, on what day they were discussed. And when other jurors responded. So the court is just going to have a brief conversation with the marshal to find out who handed the marshal the note. 
Oy. Uh, sometimes that's the word that works that are not even Jewish. Before we break down this situation here, uh, let's listen to how the judge decided he's going to handle this. The jurors, and the juror's name is identified, discussed something about the case. And it was all over social media, said it was like Gone Girl. A brief mention. Several other jurors said, don't discuss this. What the court intends to do is first uh, indicate that it will question the juror who authored the note. The court will allow counsel to ask questions through the court of the juror to explain what is not readily apparent from the note. The court will then ask the individual who was identified in the note to respond to some of the questions that the court will have concerning any communications that juror may have made to other jurors concerning the case. After that, the court will have to inquire of all of the jurors individually whether they have been in any way influenced by the comments of the juror who allegedly made the comments whether they can continue to be fair and impartial, and whether uh, the comments made by uh, the individual has in or have in any way affected their ability to continue to listen to the evidence with an open mind. The court will also ask the juror who authored the letter whether, because there are no four persons chosen yet because the case is not in deliberation, was that person chosen to bring this matter to the court's attention? So there you have it. A judge very measured, very deliberate in deciding how he's going to handle this. He must be pulling his hair out because, again, this is the second juror issue just this week alone. Uh, we do know now that he did go through the process he just described, and that juror has been dismissed. Uh, I believe it's a juror on the main panel. Remember, they lost two alternates prior to this. Um, so they're down to, uh, you know, what does that tell me? Yeah, two, two alternates now, six in the box plus two alternates. Um, and Gone Girl, the focus of this social media, that, of course, was the David Fincher film starring... Um, I think it was Ben Affleck and uh, Pike, Roseman Pike, yeah. Anyway, uh, be that as it may, uh, either that person is a gone girl or a gone boy. Here with me to talk about this latest update on this case, Rich Schoenstein is here. He's a litigator with me in studio. And Catherine Lazardo is here. She is a trial attorney in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Thank you both for being here. So, Catherine, uh, you know, this thing is uh, stumbling uh, out of the blocks. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a state with only six in the box in the first place. They're running out of alternates. Uh, what do you think? Well, it is a big issue, as we know, because of the limited number of jurors that they have. But also, this really highlights how, even though with the instructions to the juror that they should not use social media, it is becoming such a burden for the court um, to monitor it. Although we show deference to the jury, of course, to make sure that they follow instructions. And there are many jurors who do that. But here, we saw that there was an issue of a juror actually posting something on social media. But the question that comes to my mind is, one, why are the other jurors following other jurors as well in the social media when they were told not to use social media? Because some of them responded and found out about what this post is. So which means several of them were using social media, not just the one that posted Gone Girl. And if only one got dismissed, how do we approach the other jurors that remain? Yeah, that it, 
media accounts. And we have that the prior incident where at least one juror was with somebody else and said, we love you to, again, I think it was the defense. I mean, the prosecution. Uh, so who's the we? Uh, you know, th th there had to have been somebody else involved there. This is really not good. Rich Schoenstein, uh, first of all, uh, my legal analysis, uh, how stupid can these jurors be? I mean, I'm sorry. It's a great system. We like to get you know people to serve jury duty. But how, how can you just dismiss how many times you've been admonished not to get on social media, not to tell anybody what's going on, and yet this stuff comes right. up. The, the, so three juror no-nos have been broken here. Number one, totally stay off social media regarding the case. That's a big problem. Number two, it sounds like there's been some discussion amongst the jurors. They're not supposed to talk about the case at all until all the evidence is in. That's the admonition to the jury. You don't deliberate until all the evidence is in. And then the third one, Michael, is somebody seems to be reaching a conclusion as to the evidence. And you're also told from day one, wait until you hear all the evidence to reach any conclusions. So that's three big problems with this. And I, you know, the court has to take action. The, the specifics of this, let me ask this follow-up, Rich. Uh, you know, the Gone Girl reference, that was something that was uh, kind of put out there to the community at, in the run-up to this trial. So it tells you how pervasive that kind of media coverage can be. And wouldn't you be asking that question during voir dire? Hey, have you heard any media reports, anything? Somebody lied. So somebody said, no, I didn't. Do you think they came up with the Gone Girl idea on their own? No, they were thinking back to when they heard it in the news. Well, you don't know. I mean, that all sounds right, but you don't know if they heard that before or during the trial. You don't know if that's something they knew about when they walked in the jur jury room or, or more problematic. Somebody else threw it out there. If they've gone on social media during the trial, which is absolutely verboten and would result in a removal of a juror, that should never happen. But the, the fact of social media media is a problem for juries and jury trials because so much information is out there that they can go get perspective from one side or another, and you don't want them to have that perspective. It's, it's, uh, let me ask you real quickly here, Catherine. Uh, you know, what do you expect to go forward from here? I mean, other than the number of appeals were based on this interaction with jury members and players in this game. What I expect and hope would happen is that these jurors will be closely monitored now, especially their social media accounts and anything and their their devices. Uh, make sure that they are not using that while they're at the trial, maybe confiscate their phones or iPads or any devices they might be bringing with them to the courthouse. and really admonish them. I know what else can the, the judge do and the lawyers do, but continue to admonish them each and every time and maybe have a harsher punishment if this happens again. Yeah, I mean, it's tough enough to get jurors. Come on, uh, you, you guys got you got to be better than that. Okay, let's take a break. We'll come back more out of Connecticut and more right after this.